This is a production of Cornell University. One of the things that I did here, and you can see the, this one here, but the way I started this one out is took the board, just drilled three holes in it, and then use either coping saw to uh, cut the holes out, and then basically you, you sand it out because you want some fairly smooth edges. And the other critical thing with the paddle, you drill three holes in it that's sort of a equilateral triangle, and then after you drill the holes in it, this upright piece here, what I basically do is take the, the handle, line it up on a piece of board where I'm going to put the holes through for the coat hangers and just take a finishing nail, stick it through the holes and give them a light tap so I can mark the holes on the wood. The paddle and the paddle piece and this piece, the holes. Yeah, they have to line up. If they don't, it's not going to crank very well at all. Here's what you basically start out with is pieces of coat hanger. Before you put them through the board, you bend them put, like the, that. put the bend in. It goes this way first, and then you put this bend in, and this bend, and line it up with the paddle. The final bend is with the paddle on in place. Um, I put the bottom one in first it's easier to do it that way. Um, and then I put the next two in. I wait to do the final bends until I have all three in place and lined up. And they're, you know, they're, you can see they're not exact, but you've got you to leave space for this to move back and forth. Uh, if you get it too tight, you're scraping on the board and it's not going to run so hard. The other thing is shaping the paddle. So that you have room, so your knuckles don't hit. Um, you can really hold this um, very well. You can see that my hand fits pretty well on that. Um, clamping it to another, putting it on another board, so you can clamp it to a table, makes a lot of difference in this project. Makes it an awful lot easier to work on. Yeah, because otherwise you're trying. If somebody's trying to hold this down and crank while the string is running over their fingers, and that doesn't work. So there were a lot of practical details. What uh, I did in was to use lock nuts, and it's like a regular nut, except it has like a plastic lining on the inside of it. And you, you torque the thing down enough so it kind of holds this thing in place. There's a washer in here on either side, but when you, when you handle this thing, what you should be able to do is should spin fairly easily because what you want to have this thing do is as you start twisting this thing this piece has got to turn and the other thing that and a little hard to say here but when you drill a hole through put the hole through you want that hole to be a little large if you look at this you'll see that this wiggles around a little bit that's perfectly all right and here again, the other thing we did is we also made sure this is all nicely smoothed out because it's just easier to handle. So a little bit of sandpapering and any of the wood pieces is definitely a good thing to do. You take the three loops of string and tie them on to um, the eye bolt here. And then each loop goes over one of the, the hooks. So that part of it's you know, fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, is when you initially set it up, is this guide tool basically uh, is used to keep those three loops separated until they start really kind of twisting themselves together. So when you're actually bringing this thing in, it's sort of playing with how much pull you put on this piece and how fast you slide this forward. And Important there's thing no rule of thumb. You you have to try it out to see how well it works out. The important out. thing is the string is formed between that piece and the guide piece, not the guide piece and the head here. 
Right, so the, the twisting is actually going on between this piece and I don't know what you'd actually call this. Tensioner. The, the tensioner or whatever. So this is the guide piece, this is the tensioner, that's the twister over there. So we just, we just, just named the pieces. Up, you just made up names. <laughs> yeah. And the materials aren't that expensive to, to put together. I mean, coat hangers, some old pine boards, The eye bolts are the expensive part. Yeah, eye bolts and the, uh, the, the lock nuts. Yeah, the eye bolts and lock nuts. But, yeah, a couple bucks, that's it. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty inexpensive project to put together. And once you've made these jigs to, to do it, um, you know, they can be used over and over again. So. Yeah, one of the other things that we did for uh, critical part of the guide tool, we make paper cutouts so that if we have to make more, we just basically lay these out on wood and cut the wood to size and then we've got a band saw that we can use to, to really get the rough shape done fairly quickly. So if you're going to do a couple dozen of them, you need some technology behind it to make them fairly quickly. But uh, other than that, in terms of uh, what you really need is an individual person making one is a decent coping saw and, and, a, and a drill. Like your drill better, you could do it with a hand drill. But uh, our tools are definitely make it go quicker. You know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, then power tools are not your things that will bite you easily. Right. The ships, they used to have what they called rope walks, where they'd actually have, they run these really long lines of rope out and you basically have a mechanism very similar to this. Uh, the warping mechanism was what that really is, was you know basically back in the fa factory they would take and you know run the strands of rope that they were going to twist together, they'd walk them on down the road and they'd have somebody out there in another wagon walking the whole thing back as they twisted the thing. So you can imagine if you wanted to make a rope that was several thousand feet long. Uh, you had a couple guys that had to go for a pretty long walk.